Good morning everybody. So in this video, I am going to prove Abel's test. So this is a video lecture for the program BSc, subject mathematics, semester 5th and session 30. So let us start improper integrals. Under that we have, under that we see the Abel's test. So this is the learning objective, this is the session outcome, these are the prerequisites that is bounded function, convergent divergent functions, infinite discontinuity. So which we have, uh, the, about these we have studied in the last classes. So now let us start a bus test. So it states that integration, if integration from a to infinity f of x dx is convergent at infinity and g of x is bounded and monotonic for x greater than or equal to a, then integration from a to infinity uh, f of x g of x dx is convergent at infinity. So that is here it is given that if integration from a to infinity f of x dx is convergent at infinity and g of x is bounded and monotonic. So bounded and monotonic means what? Bounded means if there exists a number positive number k such that the function g of x is less than or equal to that number k. And monotonic means what? Either it should be increasing or it should be decreasing for all x greater than or equal to a means if you substitute the values of x uh, which are greater than or equal to a then the function is either increasing or it is either decreasing. So that is the meaning for uh, monotonic. So then, uh, then uh, integration from a to infinity f of x g of x dx is convergent at infinity. So now we prove this test. So since g of x is monotonic and in the interval a semi open interval a to infinity it means that it is integrable on the closure interval a to t for all t greater than or equal to a also since f is integrable on the closure interval a t we have by second mean value theorem integration from t1 to t2 f of x g of x dx is equal to g of t1 into integration from t1 to epsilon f of x dx plus g of t2 into integration from epsilon to t2 f of x dx. Now call this equation as 1. So here this t1 and epsilon are in between a and t2. They are in between a and t2. Since g is bounded on the semi open interval a to infinity, so there exists a positive number k such that absolute value of g of x is less than or equal to k for all x greater than or equal to a. That means what? g is bounded. So therefore, by the definition of boundedness, there exists a number k absolute, such that absolute value of g of x is less than or equal to k for all x greater than or equal to a. So which is equation 2? Call this equation as 2. Or in particular, we say that if you consider 2 numbers t1 and t2 then absolute value of g of t1 is less than or equal to k and absolute value of g of t2 is also less than or equal to k. Let epsilon greater than 0 be given. Since a to infinity f of x dx is convergent there exists a number t0 such that absolute value of integration from t1 to t2 f of x dx is less than or equal to epsilon divided by 2k for all t1, t2 greater than or equal to t1. So this is by the definition of the uh, convergent. So now call this equation as 3. Okay, now let the numbers t1 and t2 in equation 1 be greater than t0. So that the number xi which lies between t1 and t2 is also greater than or equal to t0. So therefore, from equation 3, we write absolute value of integration from t1 to epsilon f of x dx is less than or equal to absolute value of 2k 
absolute uh, epsilon divided by 2k and absolute value of integration from epsilon to t2 f of x dx is less than epsilon divided by 2k. Now this is equation 4. Now from 1, 2 and 4 it follows that there exists a positive number t0 such that for all t1 to t2 greater than or equal to t0. So these are all uh, t1 to t2 all, all are greater than or equal to the number t0. So by second mean value theorem we have absolute value of t1 to t2 f of x d of x dx is equal to absolute value of g of t1 integral from t1 to epsilon f of x dx plus the plus g of t2 into integral from epsilon to t2 f of x g of uh, f of x dx is less than absolute value of g of t1 dot absolute value of integral from t1 to epsilon f of x dx plus g of t2 absolute value of g of t2 into integral from epsilon to t2 f of x dx less than k dot epsilon by 2k plus k dot epsilon by 2k that is by the second mean value theorem we write this uh, this integral as this one okay by this is by second mean value theorem now see here let this be a let this be a and let this be b okay so now it becomes what absolute value of a plus b okay so now by uh, in the uh, in, by the properties of absolute value of two numbers uh, or addition of two numbers so we write absolute value of a plus b is always less than or equal to absolute value of a plus absolute value of b right so absolute value of a means this one that is absolute value of a this is we have taken as a plus absolute value of this is b so this is absolute value of b now again this absolute value of a plus b is less than or equal to absolute value of uh, okay absolute value of ab is again is that is equal to what absolute value of a dot absolute value of b so therefore we write this equation absolute value of a dot absolute value of b and here also we write absolute value of a into absolute value of b so which is equal to less than or equal to now this is a bounded function g of x is bounded so absolute value of g of t1 is less than k so therefore this is less than k then dot now this is this is uh, integral from t to epsilon f of x dx is less than epsilon divided by 2k which we have proved in the last two slides then similarly plus this again this is what less than f k this is less than k because g of t is bounded into again this one is less than epsilon by 2k okay so like that we write so this is equal to now k k get cancelled here so this k k and this k k get cancelled and it gives epsilon by 2 plus epsilon by 2 which is equal to epsilon hence uh, integration from a to infinity f of x g of x dx also converges at infinity so this uh, this is the proof of the Bell's test so these are the references so with this i conclude this session thank you